Happy Wednesday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the European Outlook for today. We certainly do have a lot of things going on at the moment here, so let's get right into it. This is a slightly pre-recorded video, so a couple of bits and pieces of information may be slightly out, so just to give you a little heads up. This is, at the time of recording, the GOES 16 IR imagery showing uh, a rather active tropics at the moment. We obviously have monstrous category 5 hurricane milton now moving east northeast at around 12 15 miles per hour it is starting to become a little bit uh, faster in its form forward movement the reason why we've got a little bit of a dip now in the upper level flow over the northern gulf of mexico at the moment and the combination of the trough digging into the northern gulf and high to the east is creating a little bit of a channel now and some of the airflow is creating a slightly faster forward movement with Milton. This system is expected to hit Florida as a major disastrous hurricane, and uh, it will uh, move ashore somewhere close uh, to the Tampa Bay area. We also have um, a Category 1 Hurricane Leslie. It re-intensified uh, from a Cat 1 downgraded to a tropical storm and it's now returned to category one hurricane strength and uh, if we actually look at the atlantic it's rather interesting we have a very cyclonic look to the atlantic basin at the moment we've got milton just to the north of the yucatan we've got a uh, hurricane leslie over the central main development region we've got a uh, uh, middle latitude low here over the central north atlantic and then we've got the remnants of kirk uh, to the east of that. That system is going to move and scrape the northwest corner of the Iberian Peninsula, bringing heavy rain and strong gusty winds. We also have that system that has been somewhat plaguing the, the UK over the last uh, few days or so here, bringing uh, showers, longer spells of rain, gusty winds in some places, and also some embedded thunder and lightning. Uh, so it is a rather unsettled picture across the British Isles at the moment here. And what we are going to see over the next 24 hours is cold air descending south as both the remnants of Leslie, uh, not Leslie, uh, Kirk, moves to the east across southwestern Europe and also the feature that has been dominating the UK pattern since the back half of the weekend. We're going to open the floodgates to Arctic Air, moving southbound. So you can see here as we play through this loop here, this is the uh, cyclonic vorticity chart here at 850 millibars. Uh, paying attention to Hurricane Milton. We've also got a feature that was just to the east of Florida that uh, has been monitored by NHC. You've also got Leslie here rounding uh, what is a, a, a fairly dominant Azores high at the moment. But it's fairly uh, south displaced, if you notice, due to the strong block over Greenland, forcing the jet stream further south. It means that we've got a, a rather south displaced both jet and Azores high. But uh, what is going to happen is we're going to see Milton coming ashore very close to uh, Tampa, Florida. Then we've got the uh, trough that is moving uh, eastwards over North America. That is digging southwards here and it's going to essentially pull um, Milton um, to the northeast and then eventually to the east and then become entrained within the middle altitude upper level flow. Notice here that uh, Leslie never really um, manages to get anywhere. It kind of just dissipates as it uh, drifts northwards into increasingly cooler waters. Then we've got uh, a, fairly, um, a fairly energetic upper level uh, uh, situation developing here. We've got uh, quite a complex uh, trough uh, developing over the northeast Atlantic Basin. We've got uh, another trough here uh, to the west of Iberia at the moment as well. This is by the time we reach Friday, by the way. And then as we play through this loop, we've got another feature that moves in from the northwest, uh, that area of low pressure to the west of Iberia, then kind of slides down towards northwestern Africa. And we're by this stage starting to change the shape of the upper level pattern. Notice here that we've got another trough digging into the Great Lakes region. Apologies. We've also got um, a strengthening uh, of the jet stream across the Mid-Atlantic region here as well. We've got a, a low pressure now starting to kind of uh, replace that ridge over Greenland. 
and areas just to the south here. And as we increase the gradient between warm, tropical and cold polar, we increase the strength of the jet. And what we will start to see is as we move in through the course of the weekend and in the next week, the pattern has kind of changed quite dramatically. You notice here that we start to see a lot more uh, vorticity around the, uh, the, the to the west and northwest of the, the UK and Ireland here. And also we're going to start to see heights rising over southwest and Iberia also. So we're going to see a, a very different pattern to what we have through the next couple of days as lower pressure uh, regains control over the northeast Atlantic and higher pressure starts to build over Spain, Portugal, France, even into the southern UK with winds coming in more from a southwesterly direction. That being said, however, if you notice the uh, lines of uh, equal pressure, the isobars, where if you follow these lines here back across the North Atlantic, they're actually uh, containing some colder that's coming out of the Baffin Straits down into the base of the trough, around the bend, and then up into the northwestern UK. So I'm not necessarily buying in to a particularly warm setup based on the GFS, this one operational model. We obviously can't take this as gospel, but you notice the change taking place with the ridge of high pressure over the Azores at the moment now starts to drift westwards over the tropical and subtropical Atlantic back towards the Bermuda region and over the western portion of the basin here. So we are changing the overall shape of the pattern. The reasons why that is probably the case, by the way, is that the, the Manjulan oscillation, we've got it now firmly in phases two and three, we've got quite a strong uh, upward motion here over the Indian Ocean. We've got increasingly um, um, widespread subsidence over the Americas and over the Atlantic Basin. So you would kind of say to yourself that uh, we would expect the tropics to start quieting down over the Atlantic Basin once Milton moves through. But that being said, however, if you look at uh, this chart here again, the, the vertical vo uh, vorticity chart here, notice here as we play through this loop, I want to draw your attention quite closely. Once Milton pushes through Florida, play through this loop and you notice here that we have a, a yet another development taking place off the GFS model here over the Caribbean. Notice here, look, it's developing over the Western Caribbean Sea. Then it is going to scrape across the northeast of the Yucatan and then move up into the western and central Gulf of Mexico, making a beeline for New Orleans by the time we reach Wednesday, the 23rd of October. Obviously, this is in fantasy land, but they, that's interesting how the model is at least picking up on another development over the Western Caribbean. But let's not buy into this because this is only the operational model. I do not want to suggest in any way that we've got another hurricane on our hands towards the 20th, 23rd of October. I think it would be irresponsible uh, for me to do that. So, yeah, we are going to see changes taking place. I've explained the reasons why with the the, the MJO being in more uh, favourable phases for higher pressure in the south, lower pressure in the north. Um, somewhat milder conditions and, and, and much more uh, typical uh, mid to late October pattern that would be reflective for the UK, Ireland and Western Europe here. But I also want to show you the wave heights generated by Kirk. This is off the GFS model here. Significant wave heights seen here. Upwards of 30 to 40 feet is possible with uh, Kirk moving eastwards uh, towards uh, you know, Spain and Portugal here. So we could have some very significant um, wave action moving in in association with Kirk as we move towards uh, through, and through the course of today, we're going to see some fairly significant waves battering against the Portuguese coast, the northwest of uh, Spain, and also into the Bay of Biscay as well. So let's look specifically at Iberia. And in terms of wind, there is a little bit of a concern here that the modeling is picking up on some very gusty winds, northwestern Spain and the northwest corner of Portugal winds in excess of 152 kilometers per hour is seen by the model here and then as we play through you notice here that we've got um, max gusts 191 kilometers per hour uh, let's actually convert that and see what it shows here in terms of uh, 
kilometers per hour to miles per hour what is 191 i should have checked this before now but uh, let's see here so that's meters per second miles per hour so yeah it's actually picking up wind gusts in excess of 118 miles per hour according to the uh, according to the ecmwf and it's over the high ground of far northern spain if you notice here hopefully this is overdone but certainly it's quite interesting to see this intensity of wind blowing i actually meant to make mention of this in yesterday's video uh, about the, the, the some of the model outputs suggesting some pretty extreme wind gusts across that northern coast of, of of spain here and through even parts of the western pyrenees also looking at the uh, other aspects including the rainfall you can see here uh, let me just see bear with me a second um let's see in terms of rainfall totals here could see some very significant amounts of rain in excess of 100 millimeters of rain over far northern portugal up into the northwest of spain skipping through till the end of friday and again we've got the uh, upwards of 200 millimeters of rain falling in some places but you notice again the modeling picking up on a swathe of very heavy rainfall across southern iberia uh through, along the Algarve and into the interior south of uh, of Spain, uh, kind of in and around the Seville area, down towards Gibraltar. It's interesting how this model is picking up on some very, very significant amounts of rainfall in this part of Spain and also, like I said, across the northwest of Iberia associated with the remnants of Kirk. Looking at France in particular here as well, uh, let's have a look and see what the modeling is indicating in terms of rainfall and then we'll look at wind so we've got this swath of rain through Nantes in particular this swathe from rain down to Nantes and right across uh, areas even around the Paris area just to the south of Paris into southern and central portions of uh, Belgium as well and then into a swathe of northwestern Germany there's quite a, a, a straight line of, of fairly heavy precipitation associated with the passage of, of Kirk here, if you notice. And then we've also got some heavy precip across parts of the Alps also. So this is going to be a significant wind and rainmaker for Iberia, France, and through southern Belgium and into northwestern portions of Germany. Looking at the winds and the uh, particularly for France, and we'll see what it is indicating here. Um, so obviously the centre passes just to the northwest of Iberia, it probably coming ashore around the La Coruna area, and then it moves across southern Biscay into this, that, that central Atlantic coast of, of France here. You can see here the, the swathe of fairly heavy uh, gusty winds here coming ashore, that centre. So you've got the strongest winds on that southern flank, and it looks as if we may see wind gusts 50 to 70 mile per hour along that day, that coastline of central and southern France. So certainly it is an active time, There's that's for sure. And they uh, continuing to strive to keep you up to date as best they can here on the channel. Finally, I want to show you the uh, ECMWF. This is mean sea level pressure. This is actually in the 7 to 10 day. This is actually the now, the here and now we've got. Strong high pressure over Greenland, forcing the jet further south. We've got obviously the tropics become quite involved in the pattern here, also. But you notice here the um, the south displaced low pressure uh, extending from eastern Canada into the Central Atlantic and then up into Europe here, anywhere from Iberia, France, up through the UK, up into Scandinavia as well. But notice here how the pattern changes as we go from the day 1 to 7 to the 7 to 14 here will completely change the pattern altogether. Higher pressure replaces low pressure. That low pressure then uh, congregates up across Greenland, the North Atlantic here. This is obviously mean sea level pressure, but I think this is uh, purely induced by the eastward movement of the MJO here. That being said, however, while we may be starting to see the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation returning back to a positive phase, if you notice here off the ECMWF model, we see the eastward progression yet again of the MJO. Notice here, as we progress into the second half of October, those greens are starting to move 
through the phase four and five into phases six, seven, eight, and possibly one also. That would indicate to me this is by Friday the 18th of October. So this is a way out the next Friday. What that may suggest, by the way, is especially if it becomes more amplified, what may happen is we see the pattern, the negative AO, the negative NAO return to the pattern towards the end of October, early portions of November. That That is the kind of thinking that I'm starting to sway more and more towards it. This MJO is going to shift back towards the cold phases of 7, 8 and 1 as we move through the second half of October. So while we're pulling out of this blocky negative NAO pattern at the moment, going back more towards neutral and, and positive, we may flip back the other way towards late October, early November time frame. So we'll watch this space as we go forward here. But certainly there is plenty of things going on at the moment. Let's have a quick look actually at the uh, at the pattern here at 500 millibars. So this is the upcoming uh, seven day period. And you notice that we've got the, the positive up over Greenland, up over the Baffin Straits. We've got strong jet stream here connecting North America with Europe, displaced to the south. But then if you play through the loop here, you notice the changes taking place as we transfer heat out of the tropics into the temperate region, changes the shape of the jet, changes the wavelengths of the ridges and troughs and starts to change the shape of the upper air pattern. So this is the, the 7 to 14 day. You notice here that we now have that negative to the west of the UK and Ireland. We've got ridging over Europe here, more of a southwesterly flow, etc, etc. Let's have a quick look at the temperature profile here and we'll go back to the here and now. First of all, so We'll go back to the upcoming seven-day period of the model. Below average, UK and uh, and Ireland. Largely warmer than average across the bulk of Europe, with the exceptions of Spain and Portugal, due to the, the remnants of Kirk moving through the wind, the rain, the cloud cover. That obviously keeps the temperatures down. But as we play through and into the 7 to 14 day, it is showing a warmer than average look in week two. So that would kind of make sense, given... We're pulling the trough back towards the west and northwest of the British Isles, pulling or er, er in more from a northwesterly direction or southwesterly direction. Let's continue to play through this sequence here. Through the middle to second half of October, it's actually showing warmer than average. And then it no you notice here that as we move towards the early portions of November, it's starting to indicate a cool signal once again across Western Europe. Could it be seen? that change back to the phase 7, 8, and 1 of the MJO, more blocking, returning back to Greenland uh, and the North Atlantic. Let's have a quick check, and we'll see whether that is the case. Let's go to the upper heights and uh, see for the same time frame. Uh, let's look at Europe, or the Northern Hemisphere, should I say. And yeah, it's actually starting to show with the ridge coming back over the top once again. So certainly plenty of things going on. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I'm, I'm continuing to do daily updates with regards to Milton. We're looking at the big picture, the long, uh, medium to long range picture as well. The day to day stuff also explaining to you the reasons why I think a pattern may change. Even before the model show it, it's showing you evidence to back up the ideas. And then we'll see if the model uh, coincides with those ideas and that thinking. So, very exciting uh, times to come, that's for sure here. So keep it right here. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more information. Bye for now.